healthcare professional will use a machine called a spirometer to measure lung volumes. These volumes indicate how well the thoracic cage, respiratory muscles, and lungs are working together to move air in and out. The resulting measurements of lung volume and capacity can be used to see how well the respiratory system is working. They can also be used to help diagnose respiratory diseases. Certain respiratory diseases will cause certain measurements to change. In this video, I'll draw a spirometry readout and run through the basic lung volumes and capacities. This way you can begin to understand and use them to assess someone's respiratory function. All right, let's do this. Now, if I were able to record the lung volumes in the form of a graph, it would look something like this. Okay. Y axis, X axis. On the Y axis, I'm going to have milliliters. And then on the X axis, I would have time. Okay. So let me start with normal tidal volume. Okay. So we would breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Right. This is tidal volume. The average tidal volume for both males and females is 500 milliliters. Now, if I were to breathe in normally, a normal tidal volume inhalation, and then breathe in as much air as I can, okay, and then exhale that air, right? This volume of air right here would be inspiratory reserve volume. The average inspiratory reserve volume for a male is 3,000 milliliters. The average inspiratory reserve volume for a female is 1,900 milliliters. We go back to normal breathing here. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. But then after I breathe out here, what I'm going to do is breathe out as much air as I possibly can. Okay, And the volume of air in the lungs would decrease down to here. This volume of air that I breathe out after a normal tidal volume exhalation is the expiratory reserve volume. The average expiratory reserve volume for a male is 1100 milliliters. The average expiratory reserve volume for a female is 700 milliliters. This volume of air right here that's left over in the lungs, this is residual volume. The average residual volume for a male is 1200 milliliters. The average residual volume for a female is 1100 milliliters. If I were to take expiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume, I would get a capacity known as vital capacity. This is the maximum amount of air that we can move in and out of our lungs to keep us alive. The average vital capacity for a male is 4,600 milliliters. The average vital capacity for a female is 3,100 milliliters. This volume right here where we consider all of the volumes, this would be total lung capacity. Total lung capacity is the sum of residual volume, plus expiratory reserve volume, plus tidal volume, plus inspiratory reserve volume. Another way we can say that is total lung capacity equals vital capacity plus residual volume. The average total lung capacity for a male is 5,800 milliliters. The average total lung capacity for a female is 4,200 milliliters. This capacity right here this would be inspiratory capacity. You can see how we take the volume of air that we breathe in with a normal tidal volume breath and then our inspiratory reserve volume that we breathe in, that maximum amount of air that we can breathe in after a normal tidal volume breath, we add those together and we get our inspiratory capacity. The average inspiratory capacity for a male is 3,500 milliliters. The average inspiratory capacity for a female is 2,400 milliliters. This volume right here is functional residual capacity. Functional residual capacity is the result of adding expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. The average functional residual capacity for a male is 2,300 milliliters. 
The average functional residual capacity for a female is 1800 milliliters. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.